All right, so we are pleased to now welcome into the crew crib Raiders linebacker KJ Wright in the building with yours truly, <laughs> Josina Anderson, and the rest of the crew will be talking about it too later. What's going on? What's up, Josina? How you doing? Man, how are you doing is really the question. There's just so much going on in Las Vegas, and what happens in Las Vegas right now is not staying in Las <laughs> Vegas. There was yeah. a big headline, as I'm sure you know and learned rather quickly, that your head coach and former now, John Gruden, uh, resigned after you know emails came out uh, showing that he had used uh, uh, racial language, homophobic language, misogynist, uh, misogynistic language in these emails that were revealed in a number of publications uh, between the Wall Street Journal and also the New York Times. So mm -hmm. I am just curious, first and foremost, uh, let's just start from your reaction to your coach uh, Gruden no longer being your coach. Yeah, it is. Um, well, first of all, when I signed with the Raiders, John Gruden was a big part of why I decided to come here. I've always loved uh, with, you know, ESPN, Monday Night Football. You know, he's a Super Bowl winning coach. I said Vegas would be the perfect spot for me to go to. And um, when I found out the news yesterday, I, my phone was just blowing up and it, it really caught me by surprise. The way that it happened, it escalated really quickly. And um, for him to leave, this is my first time experienced a coach leaving in the middle of the season. And so when it all happened, like myself and most of my teammates, we were very shocked and surprised. So let's go back to the beginning because the initial email that came out had to do with your uh, union leader, NFLPA executive director, D. Maurice Smith, in which uh, email reportedly said that Gruden uh, said in this email calling him uh, Dumber Smith, and obviously that's his not not his name, D-U-M-B, mm -hmm. using that, and saying that his uh, lips are the size of Michelin tires. Um, a lot of people uh, have characterized that as a racial trope. I'm mm -hmm. curious, what was your reaction to the initial email comment that came out? Yeah, well, when well, Gruden, first of all, he addressed it to the team. He's like, fellas, there's this article about to come out. And he clearly said what he said that was in the article. He said what he said. And so for me, um, he said, I was making sure that there wasn't more to the email. I was making sure there wasn't other uh, racial language that that is very offensive. That's what I was looking for in the email. And so his word, his words stood clear. And and I was like, OK, he didn't say the N word. He didn't say anything of that nature. So for me, I didn't look too in depth into it. I wasn't too offended because mm -hmm. for me, there's only certain racial things that trigger me. Mm -hmm. So at the time that he talked to the team, did he just detail this one comment about D. Maurice Smith or did he also detail the other things that have come to light in a subsequent report by The New York Times? Yeah, the, we just had one meeting and that was talking about D. Smith. And um, we, I didn't find out until yesterday's news, until articles came out. We just had our normal team meeting like we always did. And uh, we just went about business the way that we usually do after um, a Sunday's game. So after Gruden disclosed that he had said something offensive about D. Marie Smith, according to what you're telling us, how did um, the rest of your teammates react? I know you guys had a meeting after that, but in that in that short period right after he disclosed that. Yeah, it was I, everyone felt the same. It was like, is there more to the story? Because, you know, when you tell a story, you would only tell a certain amount. But his words stood true. He said with the rubber lips, with the Michelin tires. And I was like, did he say any more racial things that were really like, OK, yeah, this this is not good. And so we, we didn't find that. And so we just moved on as a team. We played the game regularly. The vibes were good. The energy was good. We just went into a game like we always did on Sunday. So he did use that explanation when he was talking yeah. to you guys, saying that he typically uses uh, uh, or refers to rubber lips as a way of um, describing someone who he feels like is lying. Did he say mm -hmm. that to you guys? Did he mm -hmm. use that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, did you find, and we'll move on from that, but quickly, did you find that interesting? Because the comment says nothing about D. Maurice Smith, at least the ones that are disclosed in the Washington, excuse me, the Wall Street Journal article. It mentions nothing about lying. What it does is it talks about the size of the lips, though. Mm -hmm. Did you catch yeah. that? Yeah, but so what, 
so so explain to me what when you read it what did you what did you get from it well i noticed that the comment obviously referred to him as dumb which is obviously insulting and the second thing i noticed is that he was talking about the size of the lips so even if the the comment um, or in the past or using the phrase rubber lips is somehow a way that he refers to people that he thinks is not lying. And of course, just to give this, you know, comment a little bit more context, it was mm -hmm. written at the time that the union and the league were in a labor dispute. And he, uh, according to this article, did not like the direction that, uh, yeah, uh, DeMaurice Smith was leading the players in at the time and expressed, you know, not trusting it according to this article. But even if it was about the, a lack of trust, are you feeling like DeMaurice Smith is, uh, not telling the truth, that's not what the comment says, at least the part that's disclosed in the Wall Street Journal. It refers to the size of his lips. So that that mm -hmm. part is what stood out to me. Yeah, and let's let's just get to the root of it. Let's just get to the root of it, because a lot of people are asking me, do you think what he said was racist? Do you think he, John Gruden's a racist? For, for me, I know that people, I know it's us as people, we make stereotypical comments about different ethnic cultures. Let's People do that. And so did, did was it racist? Did it make John Gruden a racist? No. Did it have racial undertone? I would I would say yes, it did. And so my thing is that when it comes to those and those emails, a lot of us as people say things in private that we wouldn't dare say in public. Right? There's I could go through your phone, I could go through somebody's emails and find something that I would look like, oh, this person is not who they portray to be. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's the thing. I know that there's been lock. We've had live locker room talk. You get in the group chat with your boys. You say stuff that you wouldn't dare say in public. Does not that make you a racist? Is that the question that you're posing rhetorically or, or that's what you're answering to yourself? That's what I'm asking rhetorically. That make you a racist mm -hmm. is my question. Mm -hmm. I think you can make a, a racial comment and not be a racist, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Because I know I've, I've, I've said some things about people that I wouldn't dare. Mm -hmm. Say in front of their face. And that's just the truth. We all do it. And if you say that you don't do it, you're full of it and you're lying. Well, there's some people who wouldn't uh, make the distinction, you know, in saying that if you're making racial comments, that there's that's somewhat reflective of your character. And I hear what you're saying in terms of making the distinction between those two and also the distinction between for you, what is said in private and versus what people say in public, regardless of mm -hmm. whether there's a racial tone or they're just offensive, private or insulting comments, you know, in general. And I hear how you feel by how you're describing that. But even now, after the uh, article came out and it revealed that he had offensive language about players who protest and saying that uh, or in indicating, according to this article, that they should be terminated. And Eric Reed, uh, offensive mm -hmm. language about women referees, offensive language about the former president and current president of the United States uh, sharing pictures of, of women that are not, you know, uh, completely dressed again, according to this article. Now that you have heard more of this offensive language, mm -hmm. um, what does that make you feel about? his character, particularly since you're making the distinction between yeah. comments and character. Right, George, here's the thing. I'm not here to say Gruden was right or wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to say Gruden was right or wrong. Mm -hmm. What my problem is, the problem that I have with is being canceled. Mm -hmm. Like remove, let's remove God, let's remove John Gruden from the situation real, real quick. My problem is how mainstream culture wants to create a thought process and mindset that we all have to agree on. We all got different thoughts, Joe. Mm -hmm. The way that I choose to raise my kids in my household, the way you choose to raise your kids in your household is two different things. Mm -hmm. All right. If my neighbor got a sign, a, a Joe Biden flag on his household, who am I to say he needs to take that flag down? What I wanted for us to do as a country is for us to think this way, you think that way. And we could all keep it moving and be and keep it coping steady. Well, my, well, 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 my, go ahead, go ahead, Joe. Go no, ahead. No, please finish your thought. My thing is, why will, why must there be a thought process that mainstream culture puts on us that we all got to agree on? Because we're different, and different is good. Different is okay, but that no one can tell me how I should operate and move and and raise my kids or raise my family or how I should think. 
we should all have open minds, open hearts, and move accordingly to how we feel is the way to be and not be canceled because we think differently. So I think that the point that you're raising is completely separate from, you know, the discussion around John Gruden. No, it's Gruden. all the same. It's well, let me explain same. why. Let me explain why I say that. The reason why I say that is because you're talking about cancel culture occurring because of, you know, diversity of thought. That's separate from a diversity of thought having racial undertones, racial tropes, or, you know, displaying racist language. You know, diversity of thought is different from, from that. Now, if you want to have a discussion about uh, cancel culture and the longevity of that, and you know, canceling people forever with their careers or what have you, and where um, the topic of forgiveness intersects with, you know, when we all mess up and fall short, um, that to mm -hmm. me is a whole separate conversation and definitely worthy. You know, I was on our uh, USA Today saying that even with everything that he has said, I think that John Gruden um, deserves time to reflect on everything that he has said. And then mm -hmm. after there is some sort of demonstration of an authentic heart and authentic apologies given to everybody that deserves them, um, uh, for sure, with a for, you know forgiving uh, spirit, uh, that he should be welcomed, you know, back to you know uh, have discourse with the people that embrace him, particularly the ones who initially you know were mm -hmm. offended. You know, so I understand the conversation of forgiveness. I think that that goes into a spiritual realm and is, um, mm -hmm. you know, a whole separate topic. But being canceled for diversity of thought, I'm not sure that that's, um, I'm not sure that that's what uh, people are discussing here. But the cancel culture in general is, and in, in from a macro standpoint, it's always a worthy topic. Agreed, Joe. But this, let's 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 take it back. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a private conversation. Mm -hmm. If if you look at my phone right now, you could probably find something like I can't believe KJ said that. Mm -hmm. You could look at some pictures like I can't believe KJ, I can't believe KJ did that. Mm -hmm. So that's my thing. Is that my problem is the people that's condemning Gruden mm -hmm. because we've all failed, we all done some messed up stuff, we've all said some messed up stuff. Well, so that, that goes had, to who, the, that goes to the topic of hypocrisy. Right. So that that's exactly. a whole, that's that's a whole nother topic. It's so, all tied in together. Yeah. Joe. But, it is, but it is. It's tied. But initially you were talking. OK, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. Let's talk about where you are right now. You know, as far as the hypocrisy standpoint. Yes, that is a that is a worthy topic as far as all of the people who are weighing in on this, you know, need to you know, you're talking about everyone needing to look at the plank in their own eyes. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Right. Am I? Do I have mm -hmm. it right? Yeah. Yeah. So. So right now, how would you say after the news came out, the rest of your teammates, uh, you know, kind of reacted to the other things that were uh, revealed in the New York Times article? Yeah, that's the thing. When when private conversations are brought to surface, the whole everything changes. Mm -hmm. Everything changes. And it's out there. It's out there how you feel. It's out there the verbiage that you use. And when you're in a position of leading an organization, if it is known that, then it's hard for you to it's hard for you to stay. It's hard for you to stay and be the leader. And um, because there will be mixed emotions about you know, you'll be questioned, you'll be questioned. And when you're a leader, you, you're held to a higher standard. So given how you feel in saying that cancel culture in general is uh, hypocritical, um, would you been OK with John Gruden staying on as head coach? Mm hmm. And you care to elaborate a little bit more? I I would have been okay with Gruden as my head coach because, like, I let me let me make sure I word this properly. Take your time, no rush. Yeah, I would I would have been okay with Gruden as my head coach because I know how people are. Mm. People have people think how they think, mm -hmm. and we all think differently. And when it comes to football, like that, all those stuff, it's all shrunk. All those thought prices are shrunk to us coming for one coming goal to win a football game. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like I'm not, once when, when, when football ends, I'm not going to expect Gruden to be at my kid's graduation or to be at my, at my you know, like whatever. We're, when you come, when you take football people, football men and organization, 
we all we all kind of block out everything and we come here on Sundays to win football games. So are you saying, just to be clear, because I want you to be clear in how you feel, are you saying that you would be okay with John Gruden as head coach because in your mind, football is a separate quadrant from things that people say and do uh, outside of football, even though certain things that he said had to do with people in the NFL. So let's just qualify that. How, and also, or yeah. are you saying that, or in addition to, are you saying that you would be okay with it had he been able to fully um, express a long apology about every single thing that he said uh, in front of the team, and then you would have mm -hmm. uh, expressed forgiveness with that in addition to that and moved on. What I'm saying, Joe, is he said this in a private sector, mm -hmm. like, like he said it in a private manner. So I can't, I can't judge somebody off of something they wouldn't say, like to my face, if that makes sense. Like, no, he wouldn't say it out loud and publicly. You know, but how many people, how many NFL coaches or NFL owners probably think what he said and have said what he said? But those That's players are playing topic. for for their coaches. It's not a, it's not another topic, Joe. No, no, I'm saying it's, it's an addition too, not separate. Yeah, I'm just saying an addition yeah, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like mm -hmm. like he said what he said and it and it was wrong. Some people though, what KJ, he, might say that it was not private from the standpoint that even in some of those instances, and, and obviously there are six hundred and fifty thousand emails that came up a part of this investigation into the workplace misconduct of the Washington football team, but that at least some of those emails came from his private email to the work email of then team president uh, Bruce Allen of the Washington football team. So the email address that he was emailing to, at least for some of them, was not a private email. It was between, what, how many people? Two, three people? He, it wasn't, the yep. dialogue wasn't yeah. just, you know, with Bruce Allen or other people that have been emailed as a part of this email. But all I'm saying is, and I don't really want to get, you know, too granular with it. I'm just mm -hmm. pointing out that with regards to the public private, some people might say that it was not private because he was emailing someone to a, a account that was not, you know, private. Let's move on really quickly because I want to uh, get you out of here. Um, obviously, you guys are trying to move on, you know, when it comes to football how much do you think that uh this incident with john gruden impacted the last game that you had none at all mm. I, when you when i when i step when i personally step on the football field like nothing really else matters mm -hmm. besides the, the person on my sideline and the other person that i'm trying to be so none at all Okay, because when you guys lost to Chicago, some people thought that, you know, the way that you guys lost had to do with what was happening with Gruden. No, Joe, people people could think what they want to think. How many people have, have actually stepped on the football field and actually done it? Mm -hmm. When you step mm -hmm. on the football field, you're not thinking about what your coach said in an email. Not, not me. Mm -hmm. I'm worried about trying to tackle uh, Justin Fields. <laughs> so now that you guys are getting prepared for uh, the Broncos and you have your new interim head coach uh, in Rich uh, Sabatia, correct? Um, how do you feel like people are um, handling it right now as far as just the whole change of a, regardless of what Gruden said, just having a new head coach? Yeah, it's, it's gonna be different. And the good thing about Coach Rich is that he's a guy that's been in the league forever. He's a guy that's well-respected, well-trusted, and we got to get to the mentality as players is, is coaches coach and players play. And I believe that this organization or these coaches will do everything they can to put us in position to be successful. But I know defensively, we got Gus Bradley. We're going to be ready. And on the offensive side, the play call is amazing. And so I think we're going to be just fine. Uh, and lastly, has Gruden said anything to you all since uh, the statement came out of his resignation? Any other calls, texts, or comments? I mean, you mentioned that he initially addressed you guys with the comment about D. Marie Smith. Have you heard from Gruden since or anyone on the team as far as the players? I have not talked to him. Just talked in the locker room. Mm -hmm. And does that bother you that the resignation came via a statement as opposed to a direct addressing of you all as players? Oh, that's a deep question. Um... I need. I didn't think about that. It would be nice to talk to him face to face, address the team versus just leaving. I believe that you know we all earn that, and if you are to leave, 
tell us face to face because I, I've been a part of coaches that's gotten fired and they say, hey, guys, I'm leaving. I'm taking this new job. And so it would be nice to hear face to face. Mm -hmm. And lastly, KJ, before you go, uh, with some time off and uh, the ability to reflect, do you think that uh, John Gruden should be welcome back into the NFL? Yes. We all fall short. We all say stupid stuff. We we all we all mess up. And should he be canceled forever because of this? I don't think so. Well, listen, KJ, we appreciate your time coming into the crew crib. I'm sure uh, there's going to be a lot of discussion that is ongoing with what has happened uh, with the team that you play for. But it's certainly uh, we wish you guys the best of luck in terms of trying to spin the wheels forward and continuing on with your season, KJ. So thank you for your thoughts and your comments and your perspective and being thoughtful about them as well. Appreciate it, Justine. All right. Thank you.